ferries on that plane uh, with no luggage. Uh, our suspicion is these are probably uh, the diplomatic security service uh, investigating that leak at the embassy. Um, we did have a, a volunteer arrested for some other reason and asked questions uh, in Iceland about WikiLeaks. But um, there are now two sides to this story. So our, our volunteer uh, says that they were asked questions about WikiLeaks, and the police say that they were asked questions about WikiLeaks. Um, but the police say this was because of um, uh, a sticker on a, on a laptop. Um, volunteer says that this wasn't true, and at the moment we're unable to confirm um, whether the police had uh, inside information uh, about the video or whether uh, the volunteer is uh, not telling the truth. We're also joined, Julian Assange, by Glenn Greenwald, blogger for Salon.com. He's a constitutional lawyer. Glenn, the significance of what this videotape is showing uh, from the helicopter gunship, of the helicopter gunships opening fire on Iraqi civilians. I think in one sense that WikiLeaks has done an extraordinarily valuable service because it has exposed what it is that war actually is, what we're actually doing in Afghanistan and Iraq on a day-to-day -day basis. My concern with, with the discussions that have been triggered, though, is that there seems to be this suggestion in many circles, not, uh, of course, by Julian, that this is some sort of extreme event or this is some sort of aberration, and that's the reason why we're all talking about it and are horrified about it. In fact, it's anything but rare. The only thing that's rare about this is that we happen to know about it and are seeing it take place on video. This is something that takes place on a virtually daily basis in Iraq and Afghanistan and other places where we invade and bomb and, and occupy. And the reason why there are hundreds of thousands of dead in Iraq and, and thousands of dead in, in Afghanistan is because this is what happens constantly. Um, when we are engaged in warfare in those countries. And, and you see that, as Julian said, in the fact that uh, every step of the way, they got formal approval for what they wanted to do. And if you read the Defense Department investigations, which cleared the individuals involved in every sense and said that they acted completely... We may have just lost... ...operating procedure... Difference. Go ahead. And this, the, the, you see that this is standard operating procedure. The, the military was not at all concerned about what took place. They didn't even think there were remedial steps needed to prevent future reoccurrence. They concluded definitively that the uh, members of the military involved did exactly the right thing. This is what war is. Um, this is what the United States does in, in these countries. Um, and that, I think, is the crucial point to note, along with the fact that the military fought tooth and nail to prevent this video from surfacing, precisely because they knew that it would shed light on what their actual behavior is during war and, and instead of the propaganda to which we're typically subjected. And then the attacks on WikiLeaks, uh, the surveillance of WikiLeaks, Glenn. Well, the, the, the problem, of course, is that there are very few entities left that actually provide any meaningful checks or oversight on what the military and intelligence communities do. The media has fallen down almost completely. There's, there's occasional investigative uh, reports and, and journalism that expose what they do, but media outlets, for a variety of reasons, including resource constraints, are hardly ever able to um, perform these kind of functions, even when they're willing. Congress, of course, which has has principal oversight responsibility to ensure things like this don't happen and that they see the light of day when they do is almost completely impotent by, by virtue of their own choices and desires and, and as well as by a whole variety of constraints, institutional and otherwise. And so there are very few mechanisms left for figuring out and understanding as citizens what it is that our government and our military and our intelligence community do. In unauthorized leaks and whistleblowing is one of the very few outlets left, and WikiLeaks is providing a safe haven for people who want to expose serious corruption and wrongdoing. And so, of course, the Pentagon and the CIA sees them as an enemy and, and something to be targeted and shut down because it's one of the few avenues that we have left for meaningful accountability and disclosure. Julian Assange, do you have video of Afghanistan that you have yet to release? Yes, that's correct. We have a video of a May 2009 attack which killed 97 in Afghanistan. We are still uh, analyzing and assessing uh, that information. Um, last comments, uh, we, Julian. Also, Go ahead. Uh, yes. Um, 
I, I must agree uh, with Glenn, and I also also like to speak a little bit about the the media focus on this. Uh, we have seen uh, some straw manning um, in relation to this event. So quite a few people have simply focused on on the initial attack uh, on Namir, um, the Reuters uh, photographer, and and Saeed, the other one. Um, this initial crowd scene and gone well, you know. Uh, camera RPG it can look a bit similar, and it does. There do appear to be uh, two other wep two people in that crowd uh, having weapons. A heat of the moment situation. Um, even if the pen even if the descriptions were false uh, previously, maybe there's some excuse for this. I mean, it's bad, but maybe there's some excuse. This, this is clearly a straw man. We can see over these three events, um, the initial attack on the crowd, the attack on the people rescuing a completely unarmed man, themselves completely unarmed, uh, to the Hellfire missile attack uh, on an apartment complex which killed families, um, all in the course of one hour, that something is wrong. And, and the, the tone uh, of the pilots is another day at the office. Um, this is not, as Glenn said, an extraordinary event. This outlines that this is an everyday event. It's another day at the office. They get clearance for everything that they do uh, from higher command before they do it. There was an investigative report in response to Reuters, so it's not a minor incident. There was pressure from Reuters um, to produce an investigative report. There was an investigative report. It cleared everyone of wrongdoing. Um, you can read that report that was was released. It, it is clearly designed to come to a particular uh, conclusion. It was suppression of the f uh, FOI material, um, non-response non to Reuters, and now we hear um, yesterday uh, from the Pentagon an, an attempt to keep the same line, that everything was done correctly. I don't think uh, that can hold, but I think it gives important lessons as to what you can believe. Uh, even the number Everyone was described initially as insurgents, except for the two wounded children. Um, a blanket description. It was only from pressure from the press that changed that number to um, there being civilians amongst the crowd. Um, but we also see that the total death count is wrong. Um, there were people killed in, uh, in the buildings uh, next, next to this event uh, who were just there uh, living in their houses. Um, there were additional bystanders uh, killed in the Hellfire missile attack, and those people weren't even counted, uh, let alone uh, counted as insurgents. So um, you cannot believe these statements uh, from the military um, about number of people who were killed, whether people uh, are insurgents, um, the, whether an investigation into rules of engagement uh, was correct. Uh, they simply cannot be believed and cannot be trusted. Uh, well, after the footage was released, Nabil Nur al Din, the brother of the slain Reuters cameraman, Namir Nur al Din, spoke out in an interview with Al Jazeera. Is this the democracy and freedom that they claim have brought to Iraq? What Namir was doing was a patriotic work. He was trying to cover the violations of the Americans against the Iraqi people. He was only 21 years old. Other innocent colleagues and other innocent people who were just standing out of curiosity when they see journalists in a scene and they were all killed. This is another crime that should be added to the record of American crimes in Iraq and the world. Is the pilot that stupid? He cannot distinguish between an RPG and a camera? They claim he was carrying an RPG. When was the RPG this small? Small as a camera. He was carrying a small camera. An RPG is more than one meter long. Yes, it was an RPG because it shows the acts against Iraq and its people that still suffer from their crimes. We demand the international organizations to help us sue those people responsible for the killings of our sons and our people. Uh, Nabil Noor al -Din is the brother of the photographer Namir Noor al -Din and his driver Saeed Ma. They both worked for Reuters news agency. The overwhelmingly sad tributes to them online are very important. I want to thank Julian Assange, co-founder of WikiLeaks.org. Glenn Greenwald, stay with us, because we want to go quickly to that story in Afghanistan, which we will also talk about tomorrow. Uh, this is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report, and we'll talk about the worst mining disaster in 25 years in West Virginia. Stay with us.